Israel conveys its desire for a buffer zone in Gaza to Arab states following the war. Egyptian and regional sources said that Israel has informed multiple Arab states of its intention to propose the enclave of Gaza after the war ends, which includes carving out a buffer zone on the Palestinian side of the border to prevent future attacks. Israel reportedly discussed its intentions with its neighbors Egypt and Jordan, as well as the UAE, which normalized relations with Israel in 2020. According to three regional sources, reports also indicated that Saudi Arabia, a country with no diplomatic relations to Israel and which blocked a normalization effort mediated by the United States following the outbreak of hostilities in Gaza on October 7, had been notified. Since Riyadh does not formally have any means of direct communication with Israel, the sources did not specify how the news got there. Sources also said that Turkey, which is not Arab, was informed Israel is reaching out beyond established Arab mediators, like Egypt or Qatar, to shape a post-war Gaza. This initiative does not mean that the offensive, which resumed on Friday after a seven-day truce, will soon come to an end. More than 15,000 people have been killed and large sections of Gaza's urban areas have been leveled by Israel's offensive, and no Arab state has shown any desire to govern or police Gaza going forward. In a raid that occurred on October 7, Hamas abducted over 200 people and killed one, 200 dot out of three regional sources who requested anonymity, one stated, Israel wants this buffer zone between Gaza and Israel from the north to the south to prevent any Hamas or other militants from infiltrating or attacking Israel. This source was a senior regional security official, requests for comment were not promptly addressed by the governments of Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Turkey. It took some time for Jordanian officials to respond. The UAE will support any future post-war arrangements agreed upon by all the concerned parties to achieve stability and a Palestinian state, but the official did not answer directly to the question of whether Abu Dhabi was informed about the buffer zone, Ofer Falk, foreign policy advisor to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, told Reuters that there is more detail to the plan than that when asked about plans for a buffer zone. For the day following Hamas, it is based on a three-stage procedure, according to his explanation of the Israeli government's stance, the three-pronged approach comprises eliminating Hamas, disarming Gaza, and reducing radicalization within the enclave. The demilitarization process may include a buffer zone, he stated. When questioned about whether or not such plans had been discussed with foreign partners, including Arab nations, since Hamas was more than just a militant group, Arab nations have written off Israel's aim of eradicating it as an impossibility. Constraints on Palestinians Israel has hinted at the possibility of a buffer zone inside Gaza before, but according to the sources, it is now offering these plans to Arab states for future security in Gaza. The enclave was evacuated by Israeli forces in 2005. The idea of a buffer zone had been floated by Israel, according to an anonymous U.S. official. However, the official emphasized once again that Washington is against any proposal that would shrink Palestinian territory, the Arab nations of Jordan, Egypt, and others are worried that Israel is planning to force the Palestinians out of Gaza, a practice that would be reminiscent of the land dispossessions that Palestinians endured during the establishment of Israel in 1948. This goal is denied by the Israeli government. It is not clear at the moment how deep this will be and whether it could be one kilometer, two kilometers, or hundreds of meters, inside Gaza, said a senior Israeli security source, who added that the idea of a buffer zone was being examined. The 2.3 million people living in Gaza would be forced into an even more cramped space if any territory were to be invaded. Gaza is approximately 40 kilometers, 25 miles, long and 5 kilometers, 3.1 miles, to 12 kilometers, 7.5 miles, wide, the Israeli defense establishment is reportedly discussing some kind of security buffer on the Gaza side of the border so that Hamas cannot gather military capabilities close to the border and surprise Israel again. According to an Israeli official in Washington, according to the anonymous official, it is a security measure, not a political one. A source also confirmed this. The Gaza side of the border is not where we intend to stay. So far, mediation talks with Israel have centered on exchanging Palestinians in Israeli jails for hostages held by Hamas. The talks have been facilitated by Egypt, the first Arab state to sign a peace deal with Israel, and Qatar, 
which does not have formal relations but maintains communication channels open, switching gears according to two Egyptian security sources during mediation talks with Egypt and Qatar, Israel proposed disarming northern Gaza and establishing a buffer zone under international supervision in the region. Some Arab states were reportedly against this, according to the sources. Arab states may not be opposed to a security barrier between the two sides, but they disagreed on its location, they said, according to Egyptian sources, during a meeting in Cairo in November, Israel proposed that the leaders of Hamas be tried on an international scale as a condition for a complete end to the conflict. According to the sources, mediators suggested delaying the matter until after the war ended so as not to disrupt negotiations regarding the release of hostages. An official in Israel's prime minister's office said, Netanyahu's war cabinet has defined the war missions, destroy Hamas and bring all the hostages back home, and we will continue until we complete our missions. In response to the report's non-acknowledgement, an Egyptian source informed us that Israel stands and talks with Qatar and Egypt had changed from one of retaliation to one of a greater readiness to rethink its demands as mediation continued. The regional sources drew parallels between the proposed buffer zone around Gaza and Israel's former security zone in southern Lebanon. After years of fighting and attacks by Hezbollah of Lebanon, Israel evacuated that zone in 2000. It was about 15 kilometers, 10 miles, deep, according to them, deporting Hamas leaders was part of Israel's strategy for post-war Gaza. This would be similar to Israel's 1980s campaign in Lebanon, when it ousted the PLO leadership after the group launched attacks into Israel from Lebanon, unlike its previous strategy in Lebanon, which involved paying a heavy price to oust Hamas from Gaza, Israel is prepared to do the same in other countries in the region. The elimination of Hamas is a challenging and uncertain task, according to another regional official informed about the talks. According to a high-ranking Israeli official, Israel does not see Hamas as similar to the PLO and does not think it will behave similarly. A former security chief of the Palestinian Fatah faction in Gaza, Mohammed Dalin, claimed that Israel's proposed buffer zone would not provide adequate protection for Israeli forces and was therefore unrealistic. Dalin was expelled from the enclave in 2007 when Hamas took control that he warned that PM Netanyahu's forces could be targeted within the buffer zone. Daniel Flynn and Diane Kraft edited the work of Edmund Blair, while Samia Nakhal reported from Dubai, Ahmed Mohammed Hassan from Cairo, and Jonathan Saul from London. Dan Williams and Aidan Lewis contributed additional reporting from Jerusalem and London, respectively. Humara Pamuk, Steve Holland, and Matt Spetelnik contributed reporting from Washington.